Hi and welcome or welcome back to my channel, Sarah Lily Makes. My name is Sarah and I am the maker behind this channel and this is my little journaling space where I like to document and share the things that I've been working on and I'm currently working on or I plan to work on. And this is episode eight, although I think I don't really want to classify it as an episode, a podcast episode, because I want to use this episode as a fall plans or autumn plans video. So yeah, this is my fall plans video and I have a lot of fall plans. I always have a lot of plans. I tend to go overboard when I make my or when I plan my knits for the season and I might have done that again <laughs> but anyway this is my fall plans video and this is episode 8 before I jump into my fall plans I am wearing the cumulus blouse O neck version which is a pattern by Petite Knit. And it's a long sleeve, very airy blouse. And I have been wearing this quite a bit, even though it's been still warm here in Northern California. But I've really been enjoying knitting this. I mean, well, yes, I enjoyed knitting this and I enjoy wearing this garment. This is knit with Sorella's Suri Alpaca Lace in the colorway Maison, which was a spring tonal. And I know they have fall tonals coming out soon, and I'm kind of not sure yet if I want to get anything from there, but this is a... This was a perfect yarn for this pattern, the Serial Becca Lace. And I, it's held double and the yarn is held double and it is knit with 4.5 millimeter needles. Yeah, so it goes by qu pretty quickly. It's knit on a slightly larger gauge and it's just a very straightforward raglan, I-cord, I-cord at the bottom, finishing. So, yeah, just a lovely design. Um, before I actually go into the video with my autumn plans, um, if you've been following me for a while, <laughs> you might know that I am an avid fan of Sandish Garn patterns and yarn. So it might not come as a surprise that this video will be heavily focused on Sandish Garn. I'm just going to just put that out there, that this is going to be a very Siniscarn heavy episode because I, like 90% of my plans includes something Siniscarn, if not more than that actually. So that out of the way, I will go ahead and start with my fall plans and I have some notes written down here and I have the booklets here that I want to talk about and yes so the first thing that was on my plans is actually no longer a plan because I finished it <laughs> um, I'll, I'll just talk about the pattern first before I share the object the finished garment so Sanus Garn recently came out with two new magazines for the season. They normally come out with one DIY booklet, but they were very generous to us this year and they gave us two booklets for their DIY collection. And the first one was the 2308, which is volume one. And the second one was 2311, which was volume two. There are a lot 
a lot of beautiful designs in both of these booklets. And if I had the time <laughs> and the hands, I would knit every single one of them. But I've narrowed it down to like six that I want to make out of both of these booklets combined. Let me double check. Yes, six patterns out of both of those booklets. So I will go into the first pattern that I had wanted to make that is now a finished object. And you might have seen this pattern on social media. And if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen me talking about this quite a bit because I was posting progress as I was knitting it. And it is the gingham sweater, which is an all over color work checkered garment. And it features a European drop shoulder and two stranded color work. So there are three colors and each row you're working two colors at a time for most of it. There are a few parts where you're doing three colors because of the shoulder seam here. So this pattern is labeled as an inexperienced, as an experienced or advanced. Let me double check. It is labeled as advanced. So five out of five stars for difficulty. And I really think if you know how to do basic color work and short German short rows and increasing, that this is a manageable pattern. I think the advanced label is really because in the beginning part of the pattern you're working all three at the same time. So you're doing the color work, German short rows, and increases on both front, inside, and outside of the garment. All that to say, it's manageable if you can do those things combined, one, two, or three of them combined. So if you can do all of those, I think you can certainly knit this garment. It is knit with 4.5 millimeter needles and Piergant. And I used up almost all of the yarn <laughs> that it was recommended for the pattern. So this is my, this is my version of the gingham sweater. I knit it with the exact colors that the pattern suggested, which was marzipan, light brown, and acorn. And I have like one ball left of the marzipan. But for the most part, I used six and six and three balls. So I used 15 balls of yarn for this garment. Uh, 15 balls of Piergant. And I'm, <laughs> I love this. <laughs> so this is, this was the first thing that I had wanted to make for fall and it's been checked off. I still haven't woven in the ends, but you could see some of my floats there, and I still need to weave in some ends here. But I can't wear it yet because we're still having like 80 degree days, so I can't really wear that just yet, especially with it being double thick because of the entire thing being color work. So that is the gingham sweater, and I will go into more detail when I do my next podcast episode. I'll go into more detail about that. But yes, that was my first fall plan that's been checked off and I'm actually <laughs> really, really happy with that, that knit. It was, I just did not want to put it down because I just kept wanting to go do the next round, the next color block section. Um, I realized I should have also said at the beginning that how I'm going to go about this video is that I'm going to go by pattern designer. So I really only have like <laughs> two pattern designers that I'm really going to talk about in this episode. And that's Santa Scarn and Petite Knit. So I will go into detail with all my Santa Scarn patterns that I want to make. And then I will do the Petite Knit patterns after I've talked about the patterns from these booklets. 
The second pattern that I want to make is the artisan cardigan. And that is an all over texture and cable cardigan. So, I started working on this as well. <laughs> and I will pull it up because, oh, I did not bring it. <clears throat> okay. I wasn't completely prepared and I did not have everything <laughs> that I wanted to talk about. Okay, so, the artisan cardigan. And I have started on the back panel and this is what I have thus far. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about the pattern and then I will talk about how I feel about this pattern. I, that was the first pattern that I saw <clears throat> when Sinisgarn was teasing these booklets like a month and a half ago, I think. And they had a gorgeous lime green version this one. That I just like took my breath away. And I said to myself, I have to make that. <laughs> I have to make that cardigan. So I had some yarn and stash um, that I had purchased, I think, when Double Sunday had just been released. So the yarn that I'm using is. I am using, so the Petite Knit Double Sunday Cardi Cardamom and Marzipan Sin Silk Mohair. So these two combined. And I actually really like the subtle um, difference in the color. You could clearly see, actually maybe not clearly, but you could see the lighter strand of the Tin Silk Mohair kind of just poking through a little bit. So yes, I had some cardamom and stash that I thought would pair really nicely with some marzipan. So I had, the marzipan was a new to me purchase when I got the booklet, but the cardamom was some stash yarn. And I started, I cast on, and I knit down, I did the increases for the arms, the underarm area, and then I realized I had to keep knitting. So it's you knit the back panel all the way down, and then you pick up shoulder stitches, and then you knit the front panel all the way down, individually, but it's attached. And then you join at the bottom with ribbing, and I believe it's two by two ribbing. Let me double check. Yes, so you do the chunky two by two rib, and then you seam up the sides. So I wasn't really aware that I needed to do that when I cast on. So that kind of threw me off for a bit, but then I just kept knitting. And I am about halfway through the back panel. Nope, not halfway through, because this is halfway through. Where the stitch marker is, is about half. So I'm about, I have a quarter left of the back panel to finish in this moss stitch. And then I will start on the right or left panel, one or the other. But yes, so one of the panels is done with either three or four very thick cables, which I think is just stunning. And then the other side is done with a really gorgeous texture. And it's really just knits and pearls. And it makes like a... Um, like a Chevron design. And yeah, so nothing too much to say about that. I think what I am going to do is I'm going to seam the sides before actually picking up and joining for the 2x2 two two rib because I feel like I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. When I get to that bridge, I guess I will cross it. But yeah, I, it seems kind of odd to me that I would Maybe it's not. I'm not very used to seamed pieces because I haven't really done a whole lot of seaming except for maybe pockets or like grafting stuff together. So that's not my expertise really, but we'll see. When I get there, I will decide what 
would be the best outcome for me. <laughs> and then I'll get that done. And then it has a double knit button bed, which is always just stunning. And that is my second plan that I've already started on. My third plan is the Facile sweater, which is also from this booklet. And it is a very chunky garment. Well, not chunky, very bulky garment, I should say. So it is knit. This is the garment. I will also include um, pictures right here of the garments so you can see them better than me holding up a booklet. But this is knit with brushed alpaca, held double. And brushed alpaca is already considered a bulky yarn. And it is held double and knit with US 12s. So I am assuming that is going to go very quickly. And I'm going to knit it with this. <clears throat> and this is brushed alpaca in the colorway 4602. And I think this might be peach, but I could be wrong. I will include <laughs> I will include everyth everything in the description box below, including where I purchased my magazines. Everything will be down below, so you're welcome to check out the box below and if you're interested in any of the patterns and yarns that I use. So this is called the Facile Sweater, and it is a very simple, straightforward, easy sweater. I feel like it is labeled as beginner-friendly and one star difficulty. So this would be, a, it's just a very quick knit with the 12 millimeter needles. <laughs> but yes, this is my third, my third plan for this fall. So yes, it is a drop shoulder where you start at the back, knit to the armhole, pick up the front, shoulders, knit down. You join at the front here, continue knitting down and join the body, then continue knitting down Bind off in knit stitches, pick up sleeves, knit all the way down, bind off in knit stitches. And I don't think there are any decreases on the sleeve. Yeah, I don't think there are any decreases in the sleeves. And I think I'll just make it according to pattern, even though I kind of do prefer decreases in my sleeves. But I want, I like the look of this design, so I want to keep it how it's written and I will knit it the way that it's written. So that is my third plan and that is the Facile sweater and I will be knitting it with brushed alpaca 4602. Yes, 4602. And this is some stash yarn that I had ha I had purchased last maybe earlier this year when this came out. But I this is some stash yarn that I'm definitely excited to use up and get that garment completed. My fourth plan is also from this from this booklet, the 2308, and that is the debutante sweater. So the pattern on the front is the debutante cardigan, and there is a sweater version. So this booklet has nine patterns available but two of them so the debutante cardigan and the debutante sweater there are two versions there is a top down version and a bottom up version i will be doing the debutante sweater top down version and that is a basic raglan crew neck sweater it is also labeled as beginner so one star difficulty and I read through the pattern and it's very detailed and it's very beginner friendly and very straightforward. And I will be knitting it <laughs> with this yarn. So this is jazzy pink and it looks more red on camera. It's definitely got more of a purpley pink um, hue to it than what it's what's showing up here. This looks definitely looks more red than in real life. But that's, it's the color on this. That's the yarn that I'll be using. So this um, sweater is knit with two strands of tinsel mohair, held double, 
and it is knit on 3.5 and 3 millimeter needles. So it's got a very, it's got a tighter gauge and I really like the look of this sweater. So really excited to knit that and work on that. And I feel like it would be, it looks similar to the Monday sweater, which I have made a few times and will be including on this plans list later. But because it is knit with 3.5 millimeter needles, it's going to be, um, it's, it's a tighter gauge and it's going to be a slightly denser fabric than the Monday sweater in my opinion, even though it's knit with two strands of mohair. But that's okay. I like knitting with mohair. I have no problems knitting with mohair. I enjoy my mohair garments a lot. I know, I feel like it's not everyone's cup of tea and I understand. But I really like it and I will be using quite a bit of mohair this fall, actually. That is my garment number four out of my plants. And I will talk about the next booklet now. So, this one. The 2311. Um, <laughs> I want to make this one. This is, this is my fifth. This is my fifth plan, the Romy sweater. And it's stunning. <laughs> it's very classy. It's just trendy and classic and I just love it. I love the double, the two by two rib details on all of the Santa Scarn patterns. So the Romy sweater is a top down, drop shoulder striped sweater and you embroider the vertical stripes at the end. This, this pattern looks very familiar to me because it looks, the construction looks very similar to the Hadley Genser that I had knitted earlier this year. I haven't compared the two patterns yet. I will later, <laughs> but it looks very similar. The construction looks very similar to the Hadley. The Hadley Genser does not have the super long neck, but it's constructed. It looks very similarly constructed. And then another split hem, and it just looks just, it just looks good. I like it. And I like the thicker neck um, collar, neck band, turtleneck. Whatever it is called. I just, I like the thicker neck. It's knit with Pyrgint and tin silk mohair, all Pekka. And I got the Pyrgint Petite Knit, the almond. So I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but this, the mohair is a slightly different shade even though they're this, it's a different dye lot. I had purchased this almost, it's been a while. This has been in my stash for a while. This is an acquisition that I got recently because I think it's only just, the Purgant colors with Petite Knit only just came up. So I wanted to use, I wanted to use this up. So I got the matching Purgant to go with it, but it's not quite the same. That's not gonna bother me, I'm fine with the slight variation. And then the stripes will be in black. And the black color is 1099 for both the Pyrgant and the Tinsel Mohair. And then these are both 2511. The Marzipan is 2511. Almond, it's called Almond, sorry and then the black. So it's not quite the colors that's in the sample in the booklet, but the black for sure is the one in the booklet. So that is my fifth plan. And then my sixth plan is also from this booklet. <laughs> and it is the Nova skirt, which is a floor length skirt. And I feel like this would be such a great fall and winter knit to have in my wardrobe. And it 
I read through the pattern, well, I glanced through the pattern, which is how I generally do when I decide to make a pattern. And it is knit with tin pure gint and knit on 3.5 millimeter needles. Is it? Wait, no. <laughs> it's knit on three millimeter needles with tin pure gint, which is the fingering weight version of pure gint. Okay, so. Now, this is a very woolly wool. It is rustic, but I like pure gint. I don't think I have knitted with tin pure gint before. So this would be my first tin pure gint garment. And I really wanted a fallish color, so I went with a dark brown. And this is 2652. And it's like a melange color. It's got some heathering, some slight heathering. I feel like this would be such a great skirt knit. It's a fisherman's rib knit on 3.5 millimeter needles. Not 3.5, it's fisherman's rib on three millimeter needles. So that might take a while because it's a long garment. I want the longer version and it's finger and weight yarn on small needles. So that one might not be done this fall. But that's okay. It's on my plans list because I want to make it and I think it's really pretty. And yeah. So that is my one, two, three, four, five, sixth garment that I want to make. And my seventh garment from Sandis Garn is from this booklet. And it is the Guernsey Genser. I'm sure you're familiar with the Guernsey Genser. It has been all over Instagram and it is a fully textured fall cable garment. Oh. I'll pop in a picture because it's kind of hard to see it there. But I am going to be knitting it with some more stash <laughs> that I've had for a while. Oh gosh, I have, I've, I kind of stocked up on Double Sunday last year when my favorite yarn store had some sales. So I stocked up on yarn. This is the Petite Knit Double Sunday and Jelly Bean Green Tinsel Mohair. So if you're not familiar with that pattern, it's all over texture and it's just stunning. It's a, the Guernsey Genser and it's similar to the Ingrid sweater in that it has the lattice X crisscross lattice cable pattern at the front all the way around actually and then moss and a few other different textures throughout the pattern and it's just lovely and I have been working on a toddler version for my toddler that I talked about in my last episode <laughs> and I haven't made much progress than what I shared like a month ago so I want to finish that first and then make my version so that is it for my Santa Scarn fall plans. Now I will jump into my petite knit patterns. <laughs> and the first thing that I want to make is the Eva cardigan. I had started on it in my last episode and I have made a little bit of progress on it. I finished off a sleeve. I started on a second sleeve and I finished off a ball and then I put that on hold so I could work. I knew how much I needed for the sleeves so I set aside that amount for the second sleeve so I can use up the rest of my yarn on the body and the ribbing, the button band. So that is my first petite knit pattern. Um, I am knitting this with the Petite Knit Double Sunday. I forget what color it is. I'll include that. <laughs> I'll include it in the bottom below. I'm very unprepared. Not very, but I'm somewhat unprepared. I talked about this in my last episode, which was a little while ago. I'm making it 
I generally fit a size medium. My bust measurement is a size small with petite knit patterns. But I generally size up because I like my garments just slightly more oversized. But I am making this a size small because I had purchased only 12 balls of yarn. <laughs> I purchased the yarn before the pattern actually came out. And I had assumed that it was 12 balls because that is how much I normally use for a petite knit pattern for my size with Peergant. I purchased 12 balls. The pattern called for 13. I could have obviously done a size medium with their, with 12 balls, but I decided I could make it a small and share it with my daughter, my older daughter. So we're going to share that. If it doesn't look how I am envisioning it to look, then I'll just give it to her. But yes, I am knitting the Eva Cardigan for my first petite knit fall pattern, and that is knit with Pure Gint with 4 millimeter needles and 3.5 millimeter needles for the ribbing and all of that stuff. Ribbing and button band. Um, my second petite knit pattern is a Leon sweater. And I talk about I talked about this in an episode before where I had made a Leon sweater for my toddler that I wanted to make a matching version for myself. So that's what I'm going to do. I used whipped cream for my toddler's version and I'm going to use almond, but the same pink. So this is my second petite knit plan for fall and I'm actually really excited to knit on this because I love the Leon sweater pattern. The construction is similar to the poppy tee and the Eva cardigan. The shoulder and top part of the sleeve is very similar in all of those designs. I'm going to knit that with the petite knit colors plastic pink, and almond. Um, my third petite knit pattern is uh, a Stockholm sweater, v-neck edition. And I had put this in my Ravelry like months ago. I haven't actually started on it because I just haven't really had the time to actually cast on yet. I did talk about this before though. This is my plan for the Stockholm sweater v-neck edition. This is Knitting for Olive Blood Orange and Petite Knit Sand Niskarn Sunday in the color Poppy. So they are very much almost identical. Not quite the same, but they're almost. And I've been wanting to make this for a while, so it's on my plans for fall, and I need to get to it. <laughs> so that is pattern number three for my fall petite knit fall plans. And then my fourth one is a Monday sweater, like I mentioned earlier. So. <laughs> This is Cislerge Merino Singles in the color Dreamy Drizzle. And I'm going to hold it together with Sinniscarn. One zero one two, which is the color for whipped cream, I believe. So these two paired, which I have done this combination before a few times. I've definitely knit this Cislerge Merino Singles quite a few times, and it's one of my favorite yarns after Double Sunday. And I love how it knits up, and I just love her speckled yarn. It's just, she's amazing. She's just a wizard. And my last plan is a very basic, another petite knit, very basic, drop shoulder, and it's the Sonia sweater. And I want to knit it with... the Petite Knit Peergant. So this meets gauge, I believe. I have seen a few versions of the Sonia sweater with Peergant. And this for sure needs to be knit up. I need, I don't have any gray sweaters in my wardrobe and I've been really wanting to add one so 
this one. It's a very light, um, very light heathered gray, almost heathered. It's got white and darker spots of gray, but it's very pretty. And that is for my Sonia sweater. And I do have one more, not for myself, but for my toddler. And I want to make her the Eva cardigan child's version, which is a petite knit pattern like I just shared. And yeah, so those are the garments that I want to make. And I have a few beanies that I want to make as well, but I probably won't. I don't know if I want to add them here yet. Yeah, I'll just add them. So there are three or four beanies that I want to make and I want to use Double Sunday for all of them. And Sinniscarn has a pattern called Must Have Beanie and there is a version for child and two versions for adults. There is a version that's knit with one strand of Double Sunday and then there's a version knit with two strands of Double Sunday. So I want to try to do all of those and I'm going to make three different colors with some leftover stash yarn that I have. So I just want to, I have like two balls of this left. I have two balls of this left and I have like four balls of this left that I think I could use for the one that's held double. I'll include pictures of here, of the beanies here. But they are in the booklet 2208, maybe. I'll correct myself here if I'm wrong. I don't think I'm going to add socks to my list this year because I added socks to my last plans video and I got one done. <laughs> I'm not much of a sock knitter at all. I mostly knit garments. That's where my, that's my comfort knitting, knitting garments. Because I can, I feel like it's, I don't know, I just enjoy knitting garments more than socks, personally. Yeah, so that was kind of rambly and unorganized and a little chaotic. I apologize, my table is very messy. <sighs> I hope something that I shared today piqued your interest and I hope that you enjoyed watching this episode. If you are doing a fall plans list, I would love to know what's on your plans list if you feel inclined to share in the comments below. I will try to keep posting regular updates here. I kind of fell off the <laughs> I fell off the wagon for like a month. I didn't have anything for a month but I do have a regular scheduled podcast hopefully next week and I also wanted to do a summer plans reflection video at some point my spring and summer plans reflection where I go back and talk about how I did <laughs> not how I did but like you know how it turned out, I guess, and reflect on that. But maybe I won't get that done, but I'll try. And I hope this video was enjoyable. I know it was a bit rambly and a little bit messy. So thank you for sticking around if you have watched this far. I appreciate you and thank you for just being a part of, you know, my little space here on YouTube. I appreciate you and I would love to hear your thoughts on your fall plans if you have any. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!